it's a bull good morning and actually i got it pretty much in the morning here so <laughs> what's going on this is brian kuzmar with commercial rare coins and precious metals in beautiful lauderdale by the sea a little bit uh cloudy and uh, rainy out there but still even our cloudy and rainy days are beautiful days here as well in my opinion so what is going on some crazy action last night like neat last night i was actually actually uh, taking a look at markets i think uh, i don't know nine or ten o'clock i forget exactly what time and i saw that the uh, globex markets uh, they were getting markets were getting monkey hammered down thought i saw gold at 1973 unless that was a bad tick and silver uh, bopping below that 2447 level or something but uh 2547 sorry about that but seems to have leveled out quite substantially i uh, got a couple full, cool things we're going to talk about today and uh uh, I love this. Uh, this was on one of the Zero Hedge articles. I kind of took the uh, meme right there. But boy, doesn't that kind of say it all? Comex, LB, the LBMA. And if there's anything I could change here, I would put the gold paper markets is what I'd put there. The paper gold markets, which would be the Comex markets, the Globex, actually Crimex. I'm going to continue to call them Crimex markets. Uh, and the LBMA, which is as crooked as Crimex is, in my opinion. Uh, but there you go. There's the paper gold markets, and there's uh, <laughs> there you got the Comex and LBMA on the other side. And that's the, uh, most of you know what that movie's from. Uh, Weekend at Bernie's, I think it was. Well, uh, let's take a look and see what the prices actually are here. And here we go. Let's go up here. And I just did a refresh, so kind of backed off a little bit, and uh, that kind of surprises me, but not really. Uh, we were, it's been all over the place. There's a battle going on out there as far as precious metal goes. And uh, take a look at that. Even backed off on uh, uh, silver a little bit. We were at that 2608 here not long ago. Actually, the last tick I looked, it was 206, and uh, silver was uh, 2608. But it looks like we're seeing some of that monkey hammering in the Crimex markets again. Uh, good time to buy the dips, folks. Yesterday I did an article, not an article, I did a video on uh, uh, silver shortage. There's a few people that doubted that there's a shortage going on right now. Now, there's a difference between available silver and uh, 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 above ground silver supply. When, when people say there's a silver shortage, it doesn't mean there's no silver anywhere. It's, we're talking about available silver, available silver. Remember, a lot of silver that's held above ground is being used in manufacturing, it's being held by investors. Uh, <clears throat> that is not available silver. The shortages we are seeing is in what we call available silver, okay? So uh, a couple folks out there confusing that term with, uh, uh, you know, like we're running out of silver and there's no silver out there anymore. That's, no, that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about availability. And if you took a look at markets, if you, uh, you know, if you don't live in my area and you have to look at the online guys like uh, SD, JM, and uh, Atmex, of course we advertise to beat them. There's my little plug for the day. Uh, here locally, of course, we don't do any shipping. But if you take a look at their products, I think I just looked at SD Bullion. They're completely out of one ounce generic rounds, okay? Out, out, you know, call, call for availability. That's what it says right there. So a lot of these products are starting to dry up. The premiums on 10 ounce bars and kilos have, has gone up anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar almost overnight. And uh, what does that indicate? That doesn't indicate greedy dealers. That indicates uh, that there is shortages of product and everyone is fighting for the same product. I'm out there trying to source my kilos, my ones and tens, so is JM, so is SD, so is Atmex. We're fighting for the same inventory, hence the reason that the premiums on this stuff has gone up. So not only has the premiums on the selling prices what you have to pay uh, from uh, reputable dealers like myself, uh, but the premiums on the buy has gone up as well. So buy premiums have gone up, but nobody wants to sell into this market. People are, this is a buyer's market, not a seller's market. Uh, so we have a lot more buyers and sellers. And folks, it, it's basic ec economics 101. It's called supply and demand, okay? If the supply exceeds, I mean, if the demand exceeds the supply, uh, you will get uh, shortages. Of, uh, but this is why this doesn't make any sense. Look at the down prices here, down 1988.79, down 25.79. I tell you what you're seeing here. You're seeing this right here, folks. This, uh, in, in the environment where we have shortages of products, real products like gold and silver, and remember, remember what I've said over and over and over, uh, the, the tail has been wagging the dog for the longest time. And who is the tail? Uh, the tail is the paper market. It's the paper market right here. Uh, and being manipulated by the big, uh, big uh, commercial short positions and manipulated by who, whomever can make a buck off the Crimex and the LBMA criminal markets that they are. 
Uh, so you know why we're seeing down prices today and we've seen this battle back and forth? It's because COMEX and LBMA are crooked marketplaces, all right? They are the tail. The, the, the dog is real gold. The dog is not paper gold, and I'm going to call this paper gold right here. The dog is not paper gold. The dog is real physical gold. And for years and decades and decades and decades, criminal Crimex markets, which is owned by the CME and the LBMA, which is owned by a bunch of criminals as well, they're the uh, tail. They've been wagging the dog for the longest time using the paper gold markets here. The dead. Look at that. Bernie's dead. Sorry about that, but it's true. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this is why, this is why we are seeing these down prices and this war going on right now. Unfortunately, I think what these criminals are running into is genuine supply issues of real gold. Not the paper bullshit they spin on the rest of the world, but real gold. I believe that real gold and silver supplies, and again, don't confuse us with that there's no more gold and silver. Everyone ate it. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of like saying there's no more cake. People say, well, there's no shortages. There's plenty of silver out there. What a stupid statement. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make, you know, I'm not saying you're stupid. A lot of people have expertise in certain things, but, oh, there's so much silver. Again, availability, all right? This is stuff is not like chocolate cake where everyone eats it and there's truly no more chocolate cake out there. This stuff is, is but if someone's holding all the chocolate cakes <laughs> not the, and didn't eat them, uh, that, that's still, you know, there's still a lot of chocolate cake out there, but availability, what is available if no one wants to sell you their chocolate cake and they haven't eaten it? So uh, anyway, I know that's a weird analogy, but uh, the prices that we're seeing here, the down prices, sub 2000, sub 26, and uh, sub, in fact, the prices, these artificially low stupid prices that we've seen for decades uh, and has given, a lot of people don't see this as a blessing, but it has given, given many of us, yourself included, the opportunity to buy these, the real physical, not their paper bullshit, not their schemes, but the real physical gold and silver. This is what the, op they're scamming the CME, Crimex groups, and uh, LBMA, and these other paper derivatives. They're scamming has allowed us to buy the real stuff for a lot cheaper, and they're going to end up holding the bag with a bunch of paper crap that's not, you know, not gold, except for J.P. Morgan, the biggest criminals of all time, in my opinion. And, uh, and it's not just my opinion, folks, here I'm talking about. This is the opinion of people way smarter than me. GATA.org, the, uh, the people that run that organization. Ted Butler, who's been a trader since the 70s in silver markets. These are all people that will tell you how criminal these people are. And again, it goes from the uh, CME group, uh, COMEX uh, to uh, the LBMA uh, to uh, uh, all these, uh, uh, I'm sorry, all these uh, uh, big corporations that are out, you know, the big short positions as well that take these giant short positions in silver and have been manipulating the silver market for years. Uh, but uh, let's, you know, something we talk about all the time. We know who the criminals are. We know what the criminal markets are. They're, the criminal markets are these with their paper gold markets, all right? So take advantage of that right now. Buy at these low prices. Buy physical, uh, even though I'm not real keen on the premiums right now. But these prices are going to disappear one day. And let me turn that off. Sorry, I should have done that myself. Uh, looks like a spam call, too, on top of it. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, here we go. Here's the prices right now. I'm going to do a quick refresh. Let's just to kind of see if we're moving downward right now. We're moving upwards. Oh, there you go. Uh, taking that tick back up to 1995 and 2593. Folks, I'm seeing some really unusual strength out there. Typically, we have seen gold prices and silver prices get slammed and they stay down for a while, then they make a move up. But every time for the last, this is a pattern I've been recognized for the last uh, three weeks, a month, or whatever it's been, maybe even longer. Every time the criminals slam down the price of gold, silver, and platinum in the Crimex markets, in the LBMA markets, in the overnight markets, every time these criminals do that, uh, again, who are these criminals? The big commercial banks that do this, that cry, uh, CME allows to do this, and they're also uh, uh, JP Morgan. But J JP is now, they're out of uh, uh, shorting this stuff. They're, they're in a whole different racket right now that uh, they got rich off of scamming people. Again, my opinion and the opinion of people smarter than me as well. Uh, so uh, markets are kind of moving back up. What, what a choppy, choppy weird. Again, last night I saw the gold market down as low as 1973, I think. And then uh, uh, I get up this morning and say, holy crap. I mean, uh, it's really recovering fast. And, and that tells me that there's something happening. Huge amount of gold sales, huge amount of silver sales, or maybe the physical is just drying up. And that's what's creating these rebounds after these commercial short positions use their paper bullshit to drive the markets down. Again, speculative on my part, but people way smarter than me would agree with that. 
Uh, and I don't get, I don't make, I didn't make this stuff up. I get this stuff from GATA.org, Ted Butler, again, other people that really know these markets extremely well and can read these reports and tell us what's going on. And I'm just relaying this to you folks, all right? Uh, not original on my point, you know, on my thought, even though I've always known that uh, uh, markets are manipulated and, and screwed with. I've never been that naive not to think so. And if you think it just only happens in the uh, uh, gold and silver markets, I'm sure it doesn't, you know. And now we're starting to see it in the crypto markets, too. The, you crypto bugs out there, you know, especially Bitcoin bugs, are starting to see what happens when government and banks get involved with your uh, business here. It's going to go to shit. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> let's take a look at the uh, ranges here. I'm going to do a quick refresh on the live gold price. Boy, that rain is coming down right now, cleaning up the streets. Uh, wow, beautiful. I like it when it rains. Let's take a look at the, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to digress, but i sure like to see that. Let's see if the storms are out there. There you go. That's what I'm looking at right now, folks. What a beautiful, I love it when it rains, too. Uh, sorry about that. You see my attention span is pretty short. <laughs> All right, gold. Let's get back to gold, all right? Uh, here's our gyrations. Here's uh, for the day and for the evening. I'm going to do a refresh currently at 1995. Uh, there's our overnight markets. Look at that, 2060s, yesterday's monkey hammering of precious metals. Uh, wow, and it did. It got monkey hammered in a big way. And take a look at that, the high 2060s. Oh, again, folks, this is sheer manipulation and sheer manipulation by who again paper gold markets uh, driven uh, or, or regulated by uh, Comex Crimex and the LBMA and uh, the CFTC is a government agency that's supposed to watch these people doing this but the CFTC like other government regulations including the ones that were supposed to watch Bernie uh, Madoff are worthless in my opinion fucking worthless all right uh, so don't expect help from the government on this folks just don't expect it they, they're they're worthless uh, again, if there was enough money in it for the politicians that run these things, and if you ever looked at the CFTC, the ones that are supposed to be regulating Comex, Crimex, um, they are run by the Agricultural Board. And if you ever look at who sits on the Agricultural Boards, the congressmen or senators, whoever they are, how they are, you would know why it's so fucked up. All right, so uh, ineptness. That's what we have in our government regulation, and, and actually our government is run by inept people for the most part as well. So what do you expect? Uh, let's take a look at, the, again, uh, these markets. Boy, it's easy for me to get off track today. Uh, so overnight, there's your monkey hammering market. There's your sheer manipulation only to kind of shoot back up, and we're looking uh, to go above that 2,000 mark, although it's sub right now. Take a look at this. Um, you know, a little a, a rebound from that right now, but the overall strength is good. I mean, it looks like it, you know, the, the uh, big manipulators and the big monkey hammers out there in the CME and LMBA, uh, you know, they're trying to drive this market down right now, uh, probably because they don't want to see their short sellers go broke because they make so much money off them. But here's your first digress for the day. I digress. Second one, I guess. <laughs> uh, and here's today's current market, like I said, uh, kind of shot back up above that 1980 uh, where it was last night. I even think, like I said, it was 1973. I don't think it shows it on this chart. Uh, was a low I saw last night, but uh, you know she shoots back above that 2,000 mark d driven here. So there is a tug of war going out there, and from all from what I can see, the uh, uh, Comex, Crimex, LMBA, uh, the big commercial short crooked banks and that are collusive and driving these markets down, um, they are having a hard time keeping these markets down. And uh, you know. And, I, and as I said over and over so far, I really think it has to do with shortages of the real product, shortages of the things they claim they own, which is real, physical, precious metals and gold. Uh, let's take a look at the silver charts. You're going to see that same pattern last night. Look, uh, the, the, the high 26 is back down to uh, 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 close to $26 an ounce, where last night it got monkey hammered. Uh, hold on, no, I'm sorry, this morning. Look, silver gets monkey hammered this morning. Where? In the New York Crimex markets run by Comex, owned by the CME, a bunch of crooks in my opinion. Uh, again, I have to keep saying in my opinion uh, because it's an opinion I've based on other people that are smarter than me. That's their opinion too. So, uh, and uh, you figure that people like myself and people that have bigger videos and, and smarter than myself, uh, Ted Butler, again, GATA.org, are out there talking about how crooked 
comics markets are, okay? How crooked the LMBA is. And typically in the past, if you said stuff like that with banks, they'd have you a court order sent to you and tell you to shut up. They don't, folks. They don't. You know why? Because it's really happening. Otherwise, most of us would be shut down and told to be shut up, all right? The reason they don't, because they're really doing it. And they know it. They know it. Uh, the game is up, all right? Uh, and credibility of COMEX and the CME markets, uh, cre again, credit, credibility of CME, who owns COMEX, CRIMEX markets, and the GLOBEX market here, uh, is going to shit. And I hope someone, I hope that gets to them somehow. And I think they know their credibility is waning. You know, if, if look what happened with nickel. Uh, uh, was it the LMB markets this week where, where uh, a, a, short, a short position in nickel uh, in, in the nickel market was about to go bankrupt and cause a default in the, 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 the nickel market yesterday. And again, we, we talked about that. What did the LMBA, I think it's the LMBA, what did they do, or the LMB, whatever, what did they do? They suspended trading, folks. Instead of allowing the short position to get their due medicine and go belly up like they should have, what a, what a real legit market looks like, they they, they closed the markets down. They allowed them to cover that short position. And, and who lost? Well, the people that were in the long nickel position, the people that were holding on to nickel, they lost. And it tells you how crooked and rigged these fucking markets are when you see that stuff. It's out in the open now. It's so obvious this includes gold and silver. Again, take a look at that. That is just clear, sheer manipulation by collusive short positions allowed by Crimex markets, all right? And I know, I'm a broken record on this, but you can't say it enough time. And the more I say it, the more the word gets out there. And the more the word gets out there, the, the credibility of these criminals goes down, down, down. And uh, uh, that's the important thing. Because once their credibility is shot, who the fuck wants to do business with them? And that's coming to a close thing. And if it happens in the gold and silver market, what do you think would happen to COMEX, CRIMEX, the LMB if it, it spreads to other markets? If other markets see how criminal the silver market is with COMEX uh, and how the CFTC does nothing and all that stuff, they're going to start to wondering if the, the markets that they play in and the commodities are cro crooked as well. And I would bet probably yes. All right. All right. So let's take a look at uh, what the uh, futures market, not futures, but the stock market's doing. Um, I was kind of surprised market was up yesterday, but it's taking back those gains for whatever reason. Yesterday was just a dead cat bounce uh, to some degree, not sure why. My personal feelings is that the only reason we see green days in the Dow, SP, and NASDAQ, the only reason we're seeing any green days is because that's the plunge protection team. That's the, that's the uh, presidential working group in conjunction with the Treasury Department, the, the uh, central banks, or, or the Fed, and uh, again, the president's uh, 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 crew who are in there probably supporting stock markets, Dow Jones, S&P, because what they don't want is they don't want an overnight crash. That would absolutely, they don't want another 2008 on their hands, so they're cranking out the money and secretly buying equities. That's my conspiracy theory, and uh, I bet you I'm right. <laughs> Well, let's move out of here and move into uh, which surprised the living hell out of me is cryptos, man. I'm sorry to my Bitcoin friends out there, those days of uh, being a maverick in the wild, wild west and the crazy highs and lows of Bitcoin are over. Pretty much, uh, you know, Bitcoin is just, don't ask me why. I mean, one of the intriguing parts of Bitcoin was uh, it was supposed to be anonymous. They, they swore up and down it was anonymous. It's not anonymous. We now know that. It's not even closely anonymous. Uh, people swore up and down that no one could confiscate it. Well, we know that's bullshit now. So all these things we are told about Bitcoin are turning out to be nonsense, okay? Uh, including the fact that in t these type of environments, black swan environments, that Bitcoin would sail through the roof and do better than gold, in fact. It's the new gold. Well, guess what, folks? That turned out to be bullshit, too. So strike one, strike two, strike three. Uh, I'm sorry uh, you're struck out with uh, Bitcoin as far as that goes. And you know what? The biggest issue with Bitcoin, it was really a cool casino in my opinion. However, um, uh, it's, uh, uh, that's exactly what it was for a while, a cool casino, a cool marketplace. A bunch of people got in and got out. But now that it's being run uh, uh, by, uh, now that it's being regulated and that you've got big whales in there, big corporations, BlackRock and all these other companies that are going to start trading Bitcoin. It's screwed. It's screwed. The little guy is screwed. There's no way around that. All right. So that market's pretty much toast. To me, that's just going to be a glorified money market. I've said this for two years. That's going to be regulated just like a money market, et cetera. It'll be, it's not a money market. Trust me. I know there's a big difference for you technology folks out there. However, it's going to be regulated to that price-wise, price structure. And take a look at it. Again, it's just following equities. 
I wouldn't even have thought that. I would have thought, you know, maybe it went up with the price of gold in these events, and or maybe it would go, you know, go better. Who knows? I mean, that was the hype. Uh, however, it is just following the equity markets pretty much since all this stuff has happened. Uh, and we haven't looked at this chart for a little while. I want to take a quick look at this and take and uh, here you go, gold versus real rates. Take a look at that, uh, moving in the same direction as well. We were told and it was always a bullshit narrative that real rates. Once real rates went up to a, a certain point, uh, that uh, people would get out of gold. They invest in uh, treasuries, but you know that's not. Maybe years ago, you know, people would do that. Decades ago, people would definitely do that. All right. However, just like people would patriotically put their money in war bonds at one time, <laughs> uh, but we, we know for a fact that the CPI number is bullshit, and the and the numbers they use for inflation are bullshit. So uh, uh, we we know for a fact that this real yield rate that they're using on this uh, tr chart right here is based on official numbers, and we know that those official numbers are bullshit. Uh, inflation rates are probably double what they're really telling us, and that would put real rates even further down. Uh, than they are. But still, the rates are rising, gold's rising at the same time. So what happened to that narrative when real rates rise, people will get out of gold and silver? Well, I'll tell you what happened. That was a bullshit narrative spun by a bunch of corporate media talking heads that had no clue what they were fucking talking about. And the investors that listened to those idiots. Well, let me move along here as well to this chart right here. And why does gold and silver continue to go up? And will always continue to go up. Why? Because of this chart right here. We are the longest surviving fiat currency in history. The US dollar right now, in my understanding, we are the experiment. And everybody knows as a currency and an empire loses their value, the price of gold and silver and good money will climb. All right. And what's that deal? Bad money drives out good money. That's because no one wants to hold on to bad money. No one's going to want to hold on to dollars. What do they want to hold on to? Good money, which would be precious metals for sure. All right. And as long as this line continues to go down, folks, think about this. It's never going to go back up. Look, look at the maximum chart on here. Do you ever look at that? This is the uh, uh, consumer price index for urban consumers. Purchasing power of the consumer dollar in the U.S. cities since 1919 when the Fed. Look, here's when the Fed took over. Here's when we put the Federal Reserve in charge of our banking system. Look, woo! <laughs> and then ever since then, like a little roller coaster ride there, but just a long ride down the hill. And that's where we're headed to in this fiat driven world. And of course, we know that good money dries out bad money. So this bad money, the US dollar, uh, people are going to spend that, use that as much as possible. And they're going to hang on to things like gold and silver because it's real money and it's uh, and it does well. And what tells us it does well? Well, our charts do. And we can look at a historic chart and know that we're in good shape, folks, even though these gyrations may be scary at sometimes. Uh, what's the best deal out there right now? Man, it's getting tough out there, folks. But I tell you what, I would stay away from any sovereign products. If you watched my video yesterday, a lot of products are out. Uh, we're going to even be uh, probably delayed in some products as well. But the nice thing about us is we buy products from public, too. And there are some sellers out there. Uh, I tell them not to sell, but they sell. So I have a distinct advantage over the people that just buy from wholesale only because I do buy from the public as well. But uh, meanwhile, I think I can see some shortages for myself, too. And that's very unusual. Uh, watch yesterday's video. And by the way, just don't go by the title. Watch the whole video. Uh, um, you know, uh, it explains the difference between available uh, uh, silver and uh, unavailable silver for the folks that are still really confused about that. Best deal out there is still one ounce bars, 10 ounce bars, kilos. Kilos seem to be available for now. Kilos and tens and hundreds are the best deal out there. Uh, although I'm still struggling to figure out the price discovery, but uh, rest assured if you're a local customer, just go to SD Bullion, J and Bullion and Atmex and I will beat the prices they have for ones, tens and hundreds if I got them and the kilos too, uh, which is pretty easy for me to do. And same thing with gold. Stick with the bars, man. The uh, uh, even uh, uh, all the Atmex Jam and SD Bullion, uh, their pr their prices have gone up dramatically. Some products aren't available, but uh, gold not so much as silver. There seems to be more available gold out there than silver, and I know that sounds weird, uh, but again, stick with the gold bars. I think even my cost has gone up a little bit, but there's still the best deal out there, bar bar none. Get it? Bar none. <laughs> I made a funny. Uh, okay, let's move along here to oh, what is John Corman and this senator, uh, Maggie Hassan, and let's see, Bill Haggerty and Angus King. What do these four senators have in common? Well, I'll tell you what they have in common and the problem with the entire country. And again, these are Democrat and Republican senators, is that they enact 
clueless legislation. These people are trying to enact legislation that is absolutely stupid, ludicrous, and not even thought through. Knee-jerk legislation, and I can show you how, this is why this country is fucked up. Knee-jerk, stupid legislation that's not thought through for the medium and long-term uh, effects of it. And uh, why am I dissing on uh, Mr. John Corwin, Republican, Mrs. Maggie Hansen, Democrat, and uh, uh, I don't even know what he is, nor do I care. And the same thing with this. To me, the red and the blues are almost just alike power-sharing duopolies. But why am I busting their chops? Is because of this. U.S. tees up Stop Russian Gold Act, triggering LBMA and Comics to eject Russian refiners. Now, on the surface, oh yeah. <laughs> First off, most of these folks don't understand that uh, they created the uh, Russian uh, invasion. Uh, these senators created the Russian invasion. So did the, uh, our government, pretty much. Both parties created this invasion uh, by throwing a coup in uh, uh, Ukraine in 2016. We divided that country by in, in throwing a coup. We, we did it. Just look at Secretary Newland, uh, by the way, who was talking about bioweapons yesterday and uh, surprised the hell out of everybody after lying for years. Uh, <laughs> I digress. There's your fourth drink there. Uh, but no less, let me stick with this, OK? U.S. tees up stop Russian gold triggering, and basically what they want to do is they want to, uh, 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 let's see, let me see if I can get it in a nutshell here, and uh, what they basically want to do is, is take, make it so no one can trade in Russian gold bars and Russian gold, okay? And again, on the surface, you know, if you really believe the Russian narrative that the Russians were just evil people because they didn't want weapons on their border and that the NATO and the United States uh, 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 threw gasoline on that fire and we created this, unless you believe, again, you can believe that or not, whatever you want to believe in that, but I can tell you that if this indeed was true and you really wanted to harm Russia, the last thing you'd want to do is uh, uh, think about it, is to uh, uh, make their gold illegal to sell. First couple stupid things about this, and this is not uncommon in, in Congress or the Senate, these people make knee-jerk stupid legislation all the time that really fucks us in the long run, and this is another one of them they didn't think through. If you wanted to hurt Russia, why would you stop them from exporting their gold to us? Same thing with their oil. Why would you? You would want them to export their resources at super cheap prices to us, all right? I know it builds up their coffers a little bit more, but we reap the benefits of a cheap product. It's almost like it's, you know, if you read The Art of War, I'm sure that, that The Art of War would say in there, you know, milk your enemy dry, all right? Which means milk them of all the resources they have for the cheapest potential price that you can, as long as you can, all right? They did, what do they do here? What do these moronic, uh, in my opinion, uh, senators in, uh, do here? <laughs> they're gonna send, they're gonna have Russia sending all their gold to China and all our current enemies who are gonna build up their central bank uh, vaults with more gold and they're gonna do business with each other. This does not help the U.S. at all. This ridiculous legislation created by knee-jerk moronic politicians um, who don't think things through will do nothing but harm Europe and the United States even more. Uh, again, you, if you're going to play the art of war, you want your enemy selling you as much cheap resources as you can. You want to milk them dry and send them those U.S. dollars that are becoming worthless. All right, You don't want them sending the gold to China or keeping it even in their own vaults, which, by the way, is what Russia's been doing anyway. They've been keeping their own domestic supply for decades now because the they knew the dollar was going to be weaponized. The Russians are four steps ahead of the, the United States moronic senators and congressmen and the administration we have and had in office. They're four steps ahead of that. They, I, I told you this two years ago that the dollars, the, the Russians and the Chinese were de-dollarizing because the U.S. had uh, our, our stupid politicians all over the world, including the United States, our, our stupid politician weaponized the U.S. dollar, all right? And uh, they saw that on the wall. They wanted to deal with the dollar. They still probably would right now. However, they saw the writing on the wall and they realized they needed to dollarize and that's going to screw us even worse, folks. So these politicians and officials that are doing stuff like this, my God, could you, <laughs> they're bigger enemies to us than the Russians, all right? They're going to create less gold, less oil in this country, going to cost us more money. Uh, again, uh, uh, not even thinking through the idea that by allowing our enemies to ship this stuff, it's better for us, all right? They're doing just the opposite. Uh, so I don't even know where to go with this. Oh, my God, it just drives me nuts that we have the, 
these people in office. I mean, you know, they may look smart, but they are not, sir. They, I mean, <laughs> they are not, I shouldn't say, they are not. They are not smart. If you're allowing this kind of legislation to go through, uh, it's obvious that you haven't thought it through and you're really not too smart. You probably shouldn't hold that position. Uh, that's a little rough, but that's my opinion. <laughs> All right, let me get out of here and let's see what else is going on. But the stupid, stupid idea, folks. And if any, if any of you want, call these folks here, you know, you can pause this and tell them what, tell them, you know, uh, you catch more uh, 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 flies with, and these people are flies, maggots in my opinions, but a lot of them. Uh, but you catch more flies with honey than you do uh, vinegar, folks. So, you know, if you got to call them, be nice and just tell them what stupid mistakes they're making. Um, right now, I won't call them. I'll wait till I calm down, <laughs> and I'll do it later. Well, let's take a look at what's going on out there. I saw this article right here, and this is by Sprott. Uh, and I like Sprott. I think they're well-intentioned, and, and I, you know, few people know this, but uh, one of the reasons I'm not big on uh, 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 ETFs, even Sprott, who I trust, I really trust them a lot, is when, when Sprott first came out, I was like one of their first, first investors. I dumped all my SLV and I went into Sprott. What I didn't realize is it's e ETFs, whether it's SLV or PSLV, are terrible long-term investments for the most part. Um, uh, silver was around 12, 15 bucks an ounce and went up to 20 bucks an ounce. And uh, my account was worth way more than it is right now. But what happened is I, over years, your money gets eaten up in those accounts, all right? Service fees, whatever it may be, whatever they're doing, the price per share goes down on PSLV. But my account is worth about half of what it was when silver was half of what it is right now. Uh, and I don't blame Sprott for that, I blame myself. So. If you're holding long-term and, and medium-term, do not buy those. Those are probably best bought if you want to get in and out of the markets pretty quickly, as long as the premium is not too high to do it. But long-term, they're not good, folks. Uh, again, my Sprott account, which I had since the inception when they started, and silver was half the price, my account is worth half the price, and make sense of that. Again, my fault, not theirs. Uh, Long-winded into Sprott, sorry about that, but investing in gold. Um, Little thing I wanted to point out, again, their, their expertise is not physical products, I don't think. Their expertise is ETFs. Uh, but here they talk about there's no right, right way to invest in gold. Investing in precious metals depends on what you want from your investment and how much money you're willing to spend. It also depends on how you want your investment to react to the ever-changing economy. True, true. I'm not going to argue that. Once you sort of these facts, you can start thinking about how to invest in gold. First, it is important to know that buying gold as an investment is often a good idea no matter how the state of the economy. Why? Uh, this is because gold is considered safe haven. Wars can break out. Uh, here we go. All the world make the rest of the world panic when this happens. The economy tends to fluctuate, and people end up losing a lot of money. Gold, however, has a unique characteristic of staying stable in terms of price, no matter what the rest of the economy is doing. This is because gold has an inherent value, so there's a much. Um, oh gosh, oh, sorry about that. I, I read the wrong section. <laughs> well, it's all true. All right, all right. Good job on that. Uh, here, investing in gold bars. This is what I want to read. Many people wonder whether they should invest in gold bars, coins, or some other form when it comes to precious metals. It depends on what you're looking for, right? It also depends on whether you want to invest in gold in its physical or non-physical form. Keep in mind that these different forms of investing can apply to gold and silver. When most people think of investing in gold, they think of big, shiny gold bars. Bars are the purest form of gold that you can buy. A gold bar should be at least 99.5. Uh, There's only one disadvantage or benefit for some when it comes to investing in bars. They can be very hefty and hard to store. Eh, not really. You know, I, I, I tell you why that's not true. If, maybe silver bars are, are a little harder to store, but they're not that bad, folks, all right? Um, and it's heavier to carry, too. If someone had to run off with your silver investment, boy, you, you could probably run them down even if you were in a wheelchair, all right? So, uh, but no less, gold, you can, f I, I literally at one time uh, did, a, did a gold, I mean, I've done many big gold deals, but I very seldom do kilo gold bar deals, all right? Uh, mostly it's one ounce, 10 ounce bars and stuff like that. But kilo, uh, I had a customer specifically order kilos, a million, it was a $1.1 million worth of kilo bars. And literally when I stacked them up, you could put those kilo bars in a small two slice toaster and no one would know them th there. So that is not correct. There's no disadvantage in investing in bars other than you better have a damn good hiding place. But you know, I'd rather have my own hiding place in my house. And you know my opinion on that, floor safes, all that stuff is the best place to do it. Uh, hide it, floor safe it, but make sure you tell someone, uh, don't put them in safe deposit boxes for sure. Uh, anyways. Uh, let's read what here. So that's not true. Storage is not an issue. When buying even a single gold bar, you have the option to buy a very large amount of gold compared to buying a single gold round or coin. Uh, this makes gold bars the most cost effective on a uh, per ounce basis, but you need to invest considerable money to take advantage. Um, I don't think they're, these guys are kind of missing the point that uh, they do make gold one ounce bars, all right? And they also make gold one ounce uh, uh, silvers. 
uh, I mean, I'm sorry, silver is one ounce uh, uh, coins as well. Uh, it just happens to be that uh, uh, there is no advantage of buying coins over gold, uh, except some states that have sales tax issues. Uh, Florida does not, over 500 bucks, you're cool. And uh, so there's really no advantage of buying coins whatsoever, unless the price is cheaper than bars. Uh, so they're talking about the heftiness of it and gold bars are too big, nonsense. Gold bars are, uh, you know, ten, a 10 ounce gold bar is actually easier to store than 10 one ounce gold coins. So that kind of flies in the face of the logic here. But I'm not dissing Sprott because everything else they say is wonderful. I really like these guys, they're pro gold and silver. Uh, and I understand what I did wrong when I invested in it. I just wanted to pass that along to you. Um, and uh, bars are, are a better long, gold bars are a better uh, long-term investment, no less. Gold bars need to store as weathering pile on top of them. Yeah, that's exactly true. Uh, investing in gold coins, they talk about. If you don't want to spend huge chunks of money investing in gold bars, which again makes no sense to me uh, in this article, because you can buy one ounce gold coins. Uh, I mean, one ounce gold bars, and you can buy half ounce gold bars as well. So this doesn't make sense. Uh, they're saying that uh, gold coins aren't that much different from bars, except for the size. They're still pure gold, much like bars. Uh, one of the benefits of gold coins is they're much more liquid than gold bars. Untrue, not true. I'm on the front lines of buying from the public. I buy from the public too. These guys don't buy from the public. I do. There's no advantage uh, to uh, uh, gold coins versus gold bars. None, folks. I've been doing this since 1977. I'm a second generation dealer. I can tell you this is an incorrect statement. If you need money in a pinch, you will be easy, easily be able to obtain money for a gold coin in a bar. Again, not true, folks. Not true at all. And uh, I would be happy to uh, debate this issue with anyone that wanted to debate it with me. And again, I'm not dissing Sprott here on this. You know, they have their expertise, that's ETS, but apparently their expertise is not in coins and bars on the retail level. Uh, gold coins can also have great value for coin collectors. Not true, not true, not true. Uh, uh, off gold coins don't have any collector value unless they are truly collector coins. Now, big premiums, yes, but collector value, no. Gold eagles are not collectible. Uh, most $20 gold pieces that some people pump out there, you know, graded certified $20 gold pieces, they're not worth buying, folks. Overpriced, over premium, and not rare in any way. Uh, so this statement is completely wrong as well. Uh, the downside is you may not be getting as many ounces of gold for your money when you buy coins compared to other bars. This is true currently, but remember, at one time, Krugerrands, Maple Leafs, and Eagles were not much more than a gold bar, $10 an ounce more, and it was worth it at that point. But the prices there are no, it's not worth it. And uh, of course, they talk about investing in silver and investing in platinum. Uh, other than a couple um, uh, things that I, I believe they got incorrect there, not believe, they did get incorrect there in the Sprout Money article, really good article, and I got to give them kudos for writing it, and I highly recommend you watch this uh, or read this article. Our Precious Metal is a good investment opportunity. It's on ZH, which you can read for free. And uh, where are we going from here? I think I better end it. Uh, other than I hope uh, most of you, have, I did my homework this week. I've read the uh, GATA.org articles here. And of course, I used to read them to you all the time. And if I see one of, uh, note that falls in with our show, I will read them. But for right now, I hope this is on your, your homework. No one likes homework, but your suggested reading list on a weekly basis because these guys do know what they're talking about when it comes to gold uh, manipulation. And there, they're talking about senators seek to freeze Russian gold. And I would bet you they are saying the same thing I am if you read this article. And where else are we going? Uh, JP Morgan Chinese banks join rescue big nickel short. Uh, yeah, exactly. A manipulated nickel market. Highly manipulated when JP and Chinese banks are allowed to rescue a market because the COMEX and LMBA just close it down and give the short. But more or less, what CrimeX Markets do, does, the CME Group does in COMEX, and what the LMBA does is they allow these big commercial and these big wealthy billionaire uh, uh, commercial positions and private com uh, positions to have a special privilege that if they start to lose, they get bailed out by the very uh, casino that they're playing in. The casino bailed them out, folks. And, and at the disadvantage of who? At the disadvantage of the people on the other side of that trade. So if anyone doesn't think that the uh, LMBA and the comics markets are crooked, your opinion is way off. All right, I'm going to move along here because, again, something I'm just beating a dead horse at this point. Well, I'm going to call it quits here. This is Brian Kuzmark. Um, oh, by the way, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to bring up another thing here. I, I read some articles, people are talking about using gold and silver for barter, never going to happen, uh, but I'll save that for another day. Meanwhile, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. Um, 
I hope you're having a good day and I hope your day's better and keep accumulating, in my opinion, at, at these monkey hammered lower prices. One day you're going to look at these numbers and go, man, you remember when gold was 2000 and silver was 30 or 40 or 50? We're going to say that. Or, or trust me on that. Uh, of course, uh, if you don't live in my neighborhood and you don't live in South Florida, I uh, don't do any mail-in business, no online business, folks. So find yourself a good local dealer uh, that's been in business for 10 years and is smart and handsome like myself. <laughs> and if not, um, if you in, live in South Florida and you want the most competitive guy in South Florida when it comes to precious metals, come see me. I'm here 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. You can call me anytime between 10 and 4 at 954-493-8811. I have a really great staff here uh, that knows just as much as I do what the best products are and will always point you to them. So, hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.